In the tutorial video I made of creating a frame using Frame Generator in Inventor, I had a, a comment with a request uh, to take that frame and put it on a drawing with a parts list. That's what we're going to do in this video. So I'm going to switch over to a uh, blank screen. And we're going to, uh, to draw another frame quickly. I won't go through all of the step-by-step uh, -step details. I'm going to speed up this part of the video and uh, just stop at a few points along the way uh, to make uh, make note of some things as uh, we proceed. So I'm going to uh, to begin with the first leg of this table and I'm going to speed it up here. Okay, there we have our skeleton. I've got four legs. I've got a uh, rail all the way around the top. Got a rail 12 inches up from the bottom and one piece that will be a brace uh, right in the middle of the table. I can finish that sketch. Save this file and we're going to call it FR123 Skeleton. Save that. I can close it. And then we will start an assembly place that skeleton go up here to place frame 123 skeleton place it in there click on it come up here to the productivity tab ground and root i like to create origin flush constraints uh, you can select any of these that you want to uh, i like the constraints so let's apply that close that and there we have our skeleton in the assembly and ready to build around it now I'm going to go to Design, start to insert frame. It wants me to save this, so I'm going to say yes. I'm going to call it one FR123 Weldment. Say OK to that save. Now I'm ready to put in these parts. Again, we won't go through all this part of it step by step. These things are in the other video. Uh, so I'll speed this up and uh, get back with you when that part's done. Okay, there I have placed all of the frame members in, and now I will quickly get these uh, trimmed up. Okay, everything is trimmed and looks good. I can make this skeleton invisible. I don't need it there anymore. Uh, look down through the tubes, everything, uh, everything's trimmed, got that middle piece uh, brace across there trimmed. Uh, take a look at what we've got. I've got three by three inch uh, square tubes for the legs, two inch square tubes for a rail around the top and for that brace through the middle. And then I've used a uh, two inch uh, angle at the bottom for that rail. And that will give us a few different pieces to work with, different lengths of the different sizes of material uh, to help us demonstrate more of what the bill of materials can do. So I'm going to save that. Say OK, let it save all those parts. Uh, it uh, creates part files uh, for all of that. Let's go look real quick where it kind of it buries those. It creates us a folder called FR123 Weldment, and within that it creates a frame. It creates its own skeleton file inside that assembly. Uh, there is the frame itself, and there are all of the components. Uh, it gives them these long part numbers. Um, most of that, again, can stay buried down in here, and it manages that for you. Uh, so we're going to leave that part of it alone for now and just work with our two, uh, two main files that it keeps up top for us. Uh, so now let's start a new IDW file, a new drawing. Just going to use the, the standard blank template here. Click on Base View. If you still have that... Uh, that assembly file open, it will automatically put it in there for you. Uh, let's shrink this down a little bit, get that uh, scale that's on one sixth. That seems to fit pretty good. And drop a few views in this drawing. Uh, move that isometric view over. And we are going to add a parts list. You do parts list, it wants you to pick a view. Click on any of these views of the part. And say OK. This uh, warning tends to come up the first time. 
Uh, just to enable that BOM bill of materials view, that's fine. So now we can place this up in the corner. Let's zoom in and take a look at what we've got. Uh, the first thing you'll notice on this list, it has the skeleton, uh, that wireframe that we drew on the list, and we don't need it. Uh, so to get rid of that, uh, we could go in here and edit this parts list and just hide it. Uh, but we can also go right click somewhere on that parts list, go to bill of materials, and here we see that skeleton. Come over here to BOM structure, uh, double click where it says normal, click the drop down and say phantom. That tells it that that is not a part that we need to buy or we need to make, and now it is gone from the list. So we have items one through six on this list. Uh, that way we can add balloons. Let's go ahead and do that while we're here. Uh, we can balloon all of these items. So that ties those to our parts list. Click on the frame member, come click somewhere off of the frame, uh, right click and continue every time we place that and just make sure we get a balloon on every part number. There we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, you can see if you have ballooned every item. If we come over here, and get out of the balloon command, uh, we come over here, again, get on a line of the parts list. If I double click here, see what it does? It's going to open that uh, frame member for me. That's not what we want. It opens every, uh, every occurrence there. So let's close those out. Uh, come back to this parts list. Be sure we click. You can either double click on one of the lines or you can right click and say edit parts list and our list comes up and you can check and see if you have everything ballooned by looking at this column it's got that little balloon symbol uh, so as long as all of those show uh, that there is a balloon on something here, let's go back here and delete one of those come back in double click this time to edit the parts list see it is missing uh, from the 3 by 3 one 8 30 inch long. So I need to go back and put that back on. All right, now come back here, cancel the balloon command. All of my balloons are back. But let's take a look at what appears in this box. Um, I have the item number. Uh, there is a quantity here. Notice this is the quantity to make all of them. I have uh, the 3x3 three by, three by 1 8 30 inch long tube. Uh, there are four of those legs, so it tells me I need 120 inches of that material. That, uh, that number will be useful at some point, but that's not really what I want to see uh, right here. So we are going to change the way this uh, parts list looks. You can do that by coming up here to the column chooser button. Uh, quantity is not what I want. I want to remove it. What I do want this time is item quantity. I can add that to the list. Click here to move it up. Uh, go say OK to that. Go back and see what we have now. Now we have item. Uh, that matches our balloons. The item quantity, those are the numbers. Let's go here and format that column. Uh, put those values in the middle, select that option to center them. Uh, then we have the part number that tells us that we have 30 inch, 45 inch, and so on down the line. Uh, and then whether that is tube or a steel angle. Um, and that's not bad, but there's still one more thing I want to change, and we'll see why in just a second when we add another parts list to this. Let's edit it again, go back to our column chooser. I'm going to take part number off of there, and I am going to add stock number, move that up. I am also going to add the base quantity. Let's move that up the list so we see item, item quantity, base quantity, stock number, and description. Say OK to that, and now we can see uh, we have item quantity, which is the count of the item, the base quantity, which is the number of inches in each piece. Uh, stock number gives us just a little simpler description of it. 
and then description tells us the tube. Stock number gives us the size. Description tells us uh, what kind of material it is. And if we want to, we can go in here and edit these things so that they make a little more sense to us. Uh, we can come up here, format column, and instead of stock number, we can call that material size. Instead of base quantity, we can format that column and call that length. Item quantity, let's just call that QTY, quantity. I think that looks pretty good. Let's resize this a little bit uh, so that we have our item number for our balloons, the quantity of each one, uh, the length of each one. If we want to change that, if three decimal places is a little too precise for the length, we can again come in here, edit this parts list, format that column. I'm right clicking on the column heading, format column, uh, then uh, apply units formatting, and on the length, I uh, can have it decimal. Let's make it fraction. Let's go to fractions and make it, uh, say, to the nearest sixteenth of an inch. We don't have anything uh, cut off of a whole inch, so now we just have uh, those lengths. Let's come in here one more time, uh, edit that column, again, put those numbers on center. That looks a little bit better. Okay, so now we have item quantity, length, material size, and description. Let me jump in here real quick and uh, stick with my capitalization scheme. There we go. Everything matches. Uh, so that tells us what we need to cut to build this frame. Let's add another parts list. Again, get one of these views to say OK. And there we are, back where we started uh, with our original parts list. Just go ahead and come in here, edit this one, go back to our column chooser. I'm going to, uh, let's leave item for now. We'll look at that in just a minute. Quantity, I can remove stock number, remove description, we will leave. Uh, but now I'm going to go back in and add stock number. Move that up a level. Remember that is the uh, the description that it gave us of the, the size of the material. Uh, so we're going to leave stock number. And then we want, actually we need quantity in there. Let's add it back. Move that up. Say OK and OK. And now look at what it gives us. We have 120 inches. Uh, for item 1 of the 3x3, three three, 90 inches of the 2x2 two two, uh, for item 2, and so on down the list. Notice we've got three items here that use the 2x2, two two, two items that use uh, the 2x2 two two angle. So what we need to do is get these numbers combined when there is a common material size. Go back into the parts list. This time we can use the group settings. We want to group by stock number. Uh, look at the options that we have here. We can display group participants. Let's leave that on for a second. Display item numbers. We'll leave that on and say OK here and see what it gives us. Now that tells me that items 2, 3, and 4 have those sizes. Items 2, 3, and 4 all together are 190 inches. Items 5 and 6. Uh, and their lengths, items 5 and 6 together make 156 inches, and then there is item 1 uh, by itself. Uh, I'm going to go back in, edit this one more time, go back to the group settings. I'm going to turn off group participants uh, so that this can be just a cut list. I'm going to go back here and edit it, cut list, again say OK. And we have, let's see, we've got this one that uh, has a little more precision than we want to. Uh, go back, edit the parts list, not the bill of materials, format this column again. 
apply units formatting make this one be fraction you can use the diagonal slash fraction uh, back to a sixteenth of an inch precision and say okay there we have it items two three and four together use a combined 190 inches of the two by two by one eighth items five and six and item one by itself if we want to put this in order we can come and sort a to z by item that puts one first five and six seconds not really how we want it uh, let's do this we'll move this up just manually you can click on a line here uh, drag it up and down wherever you want it uh, so let's get things in order item one then items two three and four then items five and six say okay to that so now we have a parts list of the individual cuts we have oh let's see what i did there i did that wrong uh, let me rename this one table layout this is purchase list didn't catch that the first time this is cut list sorry about that all right there we go we have the individual cut list we have the raw material purchase list now we can come down here let's just add some dimensions to our table it is 39 inches wide Thirty inches tall. The let's get the corner there. That frame member is ten inches up from the bottom. Let's come in here. Let's move these around a little bit. Add a projected view of that so we can see. We can put in the distance between those 22 inches show that that middle frame member is 34 inches long at some point this can get kind of redundant it's a matter of just how much detail uh, we need to show uh, showing the length here but we have the length as well on the parts list see this 45 inches matches that 45 inches all right i think that's enough for now to show how that is done, let me get this fit back to the screen. Uh, we will save this. FR123 Weldment is fine. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have anything that you need help with, any uh, suggestions for videos, uh, please put those in the comments. I appreciate uh, the participation. I'm happy to help and try to come up with, uh, with things that are useful to you. Uh, so let me know in the meantime. Thanks for watching and have a great day.